tonight we're going to continue on build. Uh, I started off uh, a couple of Sundays ago talking about uh, just generally about building, how Jesus is praying and how he is building and how we as believers and connectors to God ought to be doing the very same thing because as he is, so are we in this world. All right. So we started that off the following uh, Wednesday. I talked about how uh, we need the spirit to build ourselves up because if we don't build ourselves up, it's going to be a little difficult to build others up, all right? So we talked about that on one Wednesday. This past Sunday, we talked about building materials, what materials you needed to build. And I told you guys, you need to be, have God involved in every part of your life. You need to have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and you need to have vision. Praise God, the blueprint to what you're doing in every area of your life. So I believe that we learned something through those things, and tonight we're going to continue on. Now, tonight what I want to tackle, I'm going to touch on, is a skill in building. All right, so I'm going to say building with me. Because, and, 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 and I believe that somewhere along the line, all of us in here are building something. All right, not necessarily a structure like a building, like a four-wall corner building or a four-wall building, but we're building something on the inside. We're either building a relationship with somebody. We're building a marriage because we need to build this thing up. We're building a business. We're building an organization. We may be building a ministry. We're building a life. Come on. We're building a home, whatever it may be. We're building something. And, 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 and so I truly believe that as we build, uh, there are some things that we need to really take a hold of. And tonight, I'm going to talk about a skill that we, I believe we not only need to have, but we need to hone. I know, you guys know what that means, hone, what that word hone means? It means to develop it, to sharpen it, you know, to sharpen this thing, to get better at it. And this skill is known as communication skills. We're talking about communication skills. Um, you know, before we got married in this room, I don't know if any of y'all in here ever went to a marriage counseling type of place. Like you actually sat before somebody to kind of give you some insight on what was going to happen in a marriage. Has any of y'all ever been into one of those? Yeah, praise God. Well, I do my best to try to get with, if I marry you guys, if I'm not marry you, but like if I marry you, uh, you know, because uh, I'm already married, praise God. Anyway, so like if, if y'all, before I marry you guys, I meet with the couple in my office and I give them some insight on what to expect in a marriage relationship, all right? Because it's not just something that you, I mean, you shouldn't. Most of us probably did. We just got thrown in there and try to figure it out. There it is. You know, and sometimes that can be tough. That can be hard to do. But one of the things that I have come to find out is that when you, when you have some sort of a communication skill and you learn how to hone it, because you know what? When you step into a relationship, uh, she has her way of doing things. He has his way of doing things. And if we don't learn to communicate with each other in those two areas, in his and her ways, sometimes that can be a big time challenge. Come on. Amen. Because that's like, man, well, I, you know, you do it that way. I do it this way. And sometimes you may say, well, I don't like the way you do it. And I don't like the way you do it. Well, listen, we got to come to a point where we learn each other's ways of doing things. But uh, that's really not what I'm talking about here. But I'm talking about having communication skills. All right. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. I'm going to go through the Bible, and I'm going to pull out a couple of scriptures tonight of dealing with how God is interested in communication. So I say communication. And the interesting thing about communication, Sister Christina, is that um, you don't necessarily just have to use your mouth. It's kind of like my baby Remy. She's about to turn one years old this Saturday. Amen. But she communicates to me in a language I don't know. But she's communicating to me. Okay? But sometimes she communicates to me, maybe not by her words, but by her actions. And here's the deal. Communication can come in the form of, of course, talking. But it could also come in eye contact. It could also come in hand gestures. It could come in body language, right? If somebody's standing there going like this and listening to you, what do you think they're thinking or doing? They're probably not listening to you. They're probably waiting for you to hurry up and finish talking so that they can go on and do whatever else they're doing. 
See, they're saying something to you. They're communicating something to you, right? How many times have y'all ever done that? <laughs> Come on now. All right. So it's a, it's a body language. It's a type of communication. But I want to pull out these scriptures, guys, because um, I truly believe that uh, this is something that's going to help all of us in this room. And, and again, let me just say this to you, Brother Ruben, is that communication skills need to be honed. Means we need to learn sometimes how to sharpen our communication skills, including myself. Okay? And I have learned in this marriage that I'm in with my wife now, like, I do my best to communicate with my wife as much as I can and in the ways that I know how. Because sometimes for a man, for a man, talking about men in here, it's a little hard to communicate uh, because our wives, our women, we women are detailed. We're just, we're just A to B focused. That's why when you ask us, what are you thinking about? We say what? Nothing. But if we were to ask you, what are you thinking about? Boy, you just opened up a door for about another 45 minutes of conversation right there. All right? <laughs> okay. But that, okay, so us honing our communication skills actually helps them to learn more about us. Okay, and, and, and so that's what I want to get into this thing tonight because I really, really, really believe that God is about to open up and hone and sharpen our communication skills. Can somebody say amen in the house? Say amen. All right, James 1.19, in the King James translation, it says this. It says, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man, you say man, right, man? <laughs> let every man be swift to hear. Uh-oh. That was kind of like an amen right there. <laughs> Swift to hear, <laughs> slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Now, I believe it's not just talking about men. It's talking about all of us, mankind, okay? All mankind, every man. And it even says brethren, so maybe it is talking to the men. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I'm, I'm going to utilize it for all of us in this room. Um. And, and really, I'm going to kind of stick with this one for the most part of tonight's message, but I also want to bring up some other ones. But I like the way the Amplified Translation uses this scripture. Watch this. The Amplified says this. It says, understand this, my beloved brethren. Let every man be quick to hear. Notice what that means. A ready listener. Slow to speak. And slow to take offense and to get angry. Whoa, come on now. You know, I believe that in, in, in these days now, man, it just seems that everybody has a short fuse. You know, and I think it's because the world is just pulling at us from every angle. And we're having to do this. We're having to do that. We're having to do it quicker. You better have it now. You better have had it yesterday. And then you go home, and it's like your wife's now tugging at you. Your husband's now tugging at you. Your kids are tugging at you. And your fuse is going, shh, like, I'm about to, I'm about to pop. <laughs> well, we need to get back to this word. We need to be quick to hear, a ready listener, slow to speak, and slow to take offense and to get angry. Now, I, listen, I believe that if that was easy to do, Jesus would need to put it in his word to remind us. Okay? Because this is not easy to do. Can I just tell you that? It isn't. Yeah, well, it's easier said than done. It is. But do you understand? What's this? It says understand this. It means it's going to require some understanding. Like you're going to have to have some patience with each other. Because let me just say this. Listen, in a relationship, whether it's with a friend or with a boyfriend or girlfriend or with a spouse or with your children or with your boss or with your coworker, in any of those areas, in a relationship of some sort, it can take sometimes years to get to understand each other. And I do believe that in a building of a relationship or in a home, 
this skill right here is one of the most important skills to have. Because without communication, you're actually ignoring. And that word ignoring is where you find the word ignorant. Okay? Got, got it, right? Some say I'm not ignorant, though. <laughs> no, listen. There are things that we have to understand. Watch this. Not only learn to communicate, but also learn to listen. Because one of the things I have found out, Sister Marta, is that listening is actually the top greatest form of communication. Listen to each other. Listen to what they're saying. Anybody in here have ever been told, you just ain't listening to me? Or maybe you're the one that told somebody else, you just ain't listening to me. And what does that do? Doesn't it frustrate you? Doesn't it get you even a little upset? Come on. Because you are you might be sitting there pouring out your heart. You might be sitting there pouring out some insight on what we need to get done. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, okay. It's like, wait a minute, man, you didn't even listen. I, and I'm saying, you know, we, we, we need to sharpen up that skill. Because I like, like the Amplified says, a ready listener. Now, I'm going to take you through some other scriptures where God talks about, um, uh, you know, uh, communication. And so let me just p- put them out real quick. Ephesians 4.29 in the Passion Translation says this. And never let ugly or hateful words come from your mouth. But instead, let your words become beautiful gifts that encourage others. Do this by speaking words of grace to help them. Wow. Don't ever let ugly or hateful words. How many of you know right now, if you go on to the news right now, I mean, that's, that's, all you're, that's all you're seeing and hearing right now. People are bashing each other. People are hating on each other. People are killing each other. People are, are I mean, I mean, murdering, all kinds of crazy things, man. Like, people, like, I was telling uh, somebody in my office just a while ago, I said, you know, like, as I was driving this morning to church to get here uh, to work today, I was meditating and I was praying, uh, Brother Jesse, and I felt like the Lord say there is a spirit of hostility right now that's overtaking the nation and the world. It's a hostile spirit. Everybody's touchy right now. Everybody's all sensitive. Everybody's all edgy. Everybody's all anxious. You know what I'm saying? It's just waiting to, like, pop. Just waiting for you to say, say something to me. And I'm like, okay, we as believers, we can't get ourselves involved in that kind of stuff. God's given us another avenue. He separated us. He has made us different. We have got to hone our communication skills, and there is a way to be able to talk to people, watch this, and be able to calm down the anxiety, be able to calm down the hostility, be able to calm down the negativity, be able to calm down the chaos. There is a way. Um, back, I used to, when I used to work at the Big Spring State Hospital back in 94, I worked there for five years, 94 to 99. And um, we had, every year, we would go to this uh, PMAB refresher training class. Every year, PMAB. And PMAB stood for prevent, Preventive Management of Aggressive Behavior. Because when you worked at the Big Street State Hospital, there were a lot of patients there, or clients that they would call them, that had mental challenges. And I worked on the adolescent unit, which means the teenagers, the young kids from ages 12 to 18. And those guys were energetic, and then on top of that, they were aggressive. I mean, you could get bit anywhere on your body. If they got close to it, if they were that, you know, they, you could get bit, you could get hit, you could get choked, you could get spit on. I mean, you can get hurt. You can get tackled down. But when we would take this class, again, PMAB, um, I became an instructor of that class. I was a PMAB instructor. That means every year I would teach the staff of that facility how to prevent and manage aggressive behavior. Right? That, that's what I would do. I would teach them how to protect themselves, and then I would also teach them if they had to take down a client, 
uh, how to do it properly and in a safe way and nobody would get hurt, okay? But the very first thing, the very first at the top list that I would teach our staff and that we would learn is to have good communication skills. To learn how to speak and talk to hostile people, hostile clients, hostile patients. How to take a hostile situation and drop it down. Bring some calmness to the situation. And we would teach them that if you can learn how to have good communication skills, you may not have to use the rest of this other stuff because that's what we wanted not to do. You didn't want to find yourself rolling around the floor with the client, you know, because they were aggressive and holding them down. I mean, because you could get hurt in doing that. I mean, even as safe as we would teach people to do it, I mean, you're always just going to have that, right? So we would teach our staff, hey, listen, learn to speak to them. Learn to talk to them. And one of the things is do not match their hostility. Because all that's going to do is escalate the situation. So one of the ways that they would teach us is, and I don't know if, if you ever get in a, in a, in a <laughs> if you ever get into a hostile conversation with your spouse, this is probably the last thing you want to do, but this is what we would teach. Like, you know what? If they're getting, if they're getting a little loud with their voice, they're getting a little hostile. You lower the volume of your voice. You lower the volume. Now, I know some of y'all have tried that at home, and it backfired on you. <laughs> like, don't you dare be getting all quiet on me! <laughs> right? Right? Some of y'all just woke up after I screamed like that, right? No? So, top priority in the first lesson we will teach is to have communication skills. So I'm going to say that to you guys tonight in your home. Learn to, to hone or sharpen your communication skills so that it doesn't lead to combative, <laughs> to a combative result. Or, watch this, combative words. Because we, we have learned here in this ministry, words have power. That's what the word said. Words have power and words can cut. Words can damage somebody. Because there's not just physical abuse. There's not just mental abuse. There is verbal abuse. And verbal abuse sometimes could be probably even worse than the mental and the physical. Because it sticks. It records in your mind. And it's like, man, and you can't let it go. It torments you. You can't let it go. It's like, man, how come I keep thinking? And, and, and these are words that were probably spoken to you years ago. And they still keep coming up in your head. Right? So communication skills need to be honed. They need to be, we got to learn how can I have a conversation with my spouse without it getting heated. And if it gets heated, how can I have a conversation with my spouse to de-escalate the heat? Like, like, you know, the other day, you know, we have a cat. My wife has a cat. Not me. But, you know, every now and then, my wife will ask me to go out there and check on Katie. Maybe, you know, give her some food or give her some water or open the door or shut the window if it starts to rain or just kind of do all that. For she got her own house. I'm like, she can do it. She got her own house. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> uh, no, so the other day, and I don't even know why this was coming on me. My wife said, can you go check on Katie just to make sure she got food? And something on the inside of me, G, just said, I don't want to do that. I said, I don't want to do it. I didn't tell her that, but in my mind, I said, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to do that. I, I just don't want to go out there. Forget that cat. <laughs> but watch this. As soon as that thought came into my mind, into my heart, I said, no, nah, hold on, hold on. Uh -uh. See, I didn't say nothing. I was slow to speak. Come on, somebody. All right, watch this. But here's what I ended up doing. Instead of getting frustrated, I ended up frustrating the frustration. And what did I do? I said, yes, honey, I'll go do it. 
Now, you know, I could have gone out stomping like some of us do. I could have gone out murmuring, you know, under my mouth. That's not even my cat, man. No, I said, no, man, you're not going to act like that. You're not going to say that. Because I'm my own, listen, I am my own best critic. I am my own best leader. I better learn how to lead myself if I'm going to learn how to lead others. And if I can't have control over my emotions and if I can't have control over my words, boy, we're going to be in some big trouble in this church. Are you with me? Yeah, no, no, no. I have to have self-control inside me. And I better learn how to start it at home. Because if I say that to the person I love the most with all my heart next to Remy and God, which is my wife, you better know I'll say something to you because you ain't my wife. (laughs) But, listen, I'm practicing honing and sharpening my communication skills at home so that we can have good communication here in this home. Because there's a lot of children up in this room right here. And we all got to listen to dad. <laughs> Come on. But I can't be all ugly and rude about it either, G. Listen, I'm here to strengthen you guys and empower you guys to be able to make it so that when you go out there and the other relationships you guys have, you can be sharp, be honed up in your communication skills and have a great, great time. You know what? I love it. I love this so much. I love when I have a conversation with somebody and I walk away from that conversation and I said, man, I really did enjoy that conversation. I just love doing that. I love walking away from a conversation, even at home. I love when my wife and I have good conversation. You know what? I, I, think, I think in our homes, we need to learn to have more good conversations than bad. Like, we get to the point where we say, you know, honey, I can't remember the last time I yelled at you. Come on. Why am I saying all this, guys? Because, listen, God is listening in to our conversations. And he's like, that's not Ephesians 4, 29. The NIV, we don't have it back there, says this. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. All right, so let's go over to Proverbs 15.1. This is Solomon, the most, the wisest person on all the earth next to Jesus. This is Solomon. He said this, a kind answer soothes angry feelings. A kind answer soothes angry feelings. But harsh words stir them up. You know, how many of y'all have ever had a conversation and it was just you talking by yourself? No, most of the time when you're having a conversation, when you're, you're having a conversation with somebody else. Okay, watch this. How many of y'all have ever been in a conversation with somebody and it got heated? <laughs> how many have ever been there? Nobody wants to say nothing? No, we in church. I ain't saying all that. But no, no, no. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody and it got a little escalated, a little heated? All right, watch this. It took both of y'all to get it to that point. We said something and the other person misunderstood what we said, and now the heat is on. And if somebody doesn't learn to put some water on this thing, we're going to burn the house down. Now, we want the fire of the Holy Spirit in our house, not the fire of bad words and ugly words. Watch this. We're in a building process right now, family. We're in a building process. We're building. I keep telling that to my wife. We're building. Just today, I had a conversation with my wife just today, and I had to ask her to forgive me because I said, honey, here recently, I've been real sharp with you, and I've just been saying, like, I shouldn't, I, I shouldn't, be, I shouldn't be treating you like that. And I, I say, you know, I just ask you to forgive me. She said, no, you know, I understand. I said, no, it's just, I'm just letting you know. And I told her, I said, you know what? I just feel like I needed to do that because we're building. We're building something here. And the word building means to construct. To construct. Not to destruct. Not to destroy. To construct. What are you building right now? What are you building? What are you working on right now? Are you building 
hopefully you're building relationships. You're building people, building homes, build, you know, building finances, whatever it is that you're working on. What is it? Well, listen, communication skills are necessary for it. And sometimes, let me just say this, guys. Sometimes you don't always have to be right. Because in you thinking you're being right by what you say, you're actually wrong. Yeah, the, 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 the message might have been right, but the motive was wrong. I remember one time I got taught this a long time ago, G. They said, man, if, if, you, if you tell somebody the right thing in the wrong way, you're wrong. You tell somebody the right thing in the wrong way, you're wrong. That means I had to learn how to hone and sharpen my communication skills when I spoke to somebody. I am very intentional about the words I use. Like I am, I'm, I'm already there. Like I just think about how, how, how am I going to put this? How am I, you know, I just, I'm already there with that. And, but I still got more honing to do. I still got more sharpening to do. Look at what Psalms 141, verse 3. So earlier it was Solomon that said something. Now his son David's going to say something. And David said this. He said a good prayer here. This is a good prayer. Help me to guard my words whenever I say something. Help me to guard my words whenever I say something. Guard my words. In the Passion Translation, it says, God... Give me grace to guard my lips from speaking what is wrong. <clears throat> the Bible says that in John 10.10, 10, it says that the, the, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The enemy. When we allow him to take over in our relationship, because he, he's always wedging something in there all, all the time. Here's one way to, to find out. When you allow him to come into there, now words of destruction start coming out of your mouth. Right? But see, we're, we're not, we're, we're, we're called to speak life. Sometimes you got to be intentional about listening to your own words. Listen to what you're saying. What am I about to start here? Am I about to start a fight or am I, to, am I about to add fuel to this thing? I'm not going to do it. I am going to be the initiator of peace in this relationship. Because who knows, guys? If I wouldn't have asked my wife to forgive me earlier for because of something I had said, that might have been a thorn in her side, and it would have grown up with her. And then somewhere along the line, I wouldn't even know what happened. Why? Why? But all because of that unforgiveness that was there. But I chose to say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to allow hostile spirits to be in my relationship. And in the best of my ability, if I can, I am going to defuse. I am going to pour the water on it. I am going to put life into my wife. Because she is not just a person living in my house. She is my teammate. We are one. Listen, and if it's just me and I'm hurting her, I'm hurting me. I'm hurting my own ship. It's like when they say, uh, ship, I said ship. All right? and so, so it was like, uh, you know, it's like they say, hey, be careful who you have on your boat who are drilling holes in it. Because how many of you know holes in a boat is not good? <laughs> right? It sink down. So listening. And I didn't get to share everything that I wanted to share with you guys, but I want, you, I want to give you a couple of things that you guys can just think about. Right? I'm just going to give you a list of things that you guys can think about. To be effective in your communication, in your relationships. Watch this. Give your partner your full attention. 
when they're talking to you. I know, I know we're busy. Like right now, some of y'all are looking at, you know, you know sometimes it's, you know, you're, they're talking to you and you're on your phone, you know, you're trying to do things or you're over here trying to shuffle some papers around because you got things to do. And they're talking, oh, I'm listening to you, I'm listening. But you know what? Why don't you drop all that and give them full attention? That'll hone your communication skills. I know, I know it. in the days of now, it's like we're all busy, we're all doing, we got things to get done. I know that, you know, let me, I'm multitasking. But not when you're right there with your spouse or with your children. You're building. Give them your full attention. Watch this. Don't interrupt your partner when they're talking to you. Sometimes I find myself doing that. And, I, and, I, and I'm thinking to myself, man, bro, don't do that. Don't do that. She'll be saying something, and I already got a plan in my mind. I already know what you got. Here's what you got to do. How many of y'all know something, especially a, a wife or a woman? A woman sometimes does not need you to tell her what she needs to do. She's just telling you something. Boy, because so, sometimes they get irritated, right? Right, women? Like, I didn't tell you that so you can give me a plan on what I need to do in the five-step program and all this. Because we'll, we'll have it. We'll have it for you. Oh, I know what you need to do. First of all, you need to do this. Second, aqui. Third, right there. Fourth, this is what you need to do. And fifth, that's it. And then boom, let's go. The, the woman's like, I, I didn't need all that. I didn't need a little five-step program. I don't need all that. I was just telling you something. But we're real quick to figure it out instead of listening. But those are some things that we have to learn to do if because we're building. We're building right now, guys. We're building. You want to have a strong, stable, successful marriage and life and relationships? This is the key right here. Communication. Right? Okay. Let me give you some other ones. Create a neutral space. Now, I know that that's something at first I thought, what does that mean? But it actually means find a place where you all sit together and can talk it out sitting down. Don't let somebody stand up during a conversation like that because then that's it. It's over. If they stand up, stop the conversation because they're about to rev up. They're about to say something to you that you probably don't. This is not what we need to do. Sit down. Let's just sit at the kitchen table with some grapes and some fruit, something nice, you know what I'm saying? Don't get something that can be thrown at you and, you know, get all over your face and mess it all up. <laughs> y'all guys know y'all be having some food fights at your house. <laughs> sit down and start talking about some things. It needs to be talked about. Every now and then, I'm telling you guys, watch this. Uh, when we celebrated, every year I try to do this with my wife. I say, honey, um, how well am I doing? And she's like, what? She's like, how well am I doing in our relationship? Is there anything that I need to fix? Is there anything that I need to change? I don't like to hear it sometimes. She may tell me something I need to change. She hasn't yet, to be honest with you. Thank you, babe. Because she's probably watching Facebook Live. But we have, we have that conversation. Sometimes it may not be a, like, it could be like, well, well I, I, let me get a whole list out of things you need to change. I mean, that's fine if that is. But watch this, guys. Let me give you a good example of things. Let me give you this one here. It may not be a good example, but it's an example. Sometimes... You need to let somebody else tell you there's some things you need to change. And let me tell you why. How many of y'all have ever sat in your house and the trash hasn't been thrown in like two or three days? But what's this? But you've been sitting in that house for a while and you don't even know that trash stinks. Why? Because you're in that atmosphere, you know? You get used to it until you step outside, you go outside your house, and then you walk back into the house. It's like, whoo, boy, we need to throw that trash. How many have ever been there? Nobody wants to raise their hand. <laughs> no. Watch this. We live with ourselves every day. 
And sometimes we don't know that there's some trash that needs to be thrown out. And that's why it's good if, if your spouse, your wife, your husband tells you, honey, this is, you, you need to work on this and not get offended. I mean, don't take it personal, but make it personal. In other words, you know what? This is right, man. The other day, I'll give you a good example. I'm, I'm, I'm being transparent here with you guys, but the other day, my wife said something to me that uh, that made me really. I I I, I, was, I, I started. It, it stuck to me. And she she said, "Honey, you know what, man? You just you just been complaining and just being all negative." And I was like, "Whoa!" When she said that to me, I didn't say anything, but it hit me. Like I'm like. That's not my nature, man. I'm not a complainer. I'm really not. I'm, I'm pretty easy going. Like, I don't really, I'm not a complainer. I don't like to be negative about things. But she mentioned that to me. I didn't get offended or nothing. I didn't get mad. But I thought to myself, that is not who I am. I said, man, I need to change something. Something's going on. Something, something's, not, something's not right within me. Something's not good. So then I just asked, Lord, I just went to the Lord. So, Lord, help me with this. This is not, there's something going on. I said, I need you to show me what it is. And one of the words that God's put in my spirit, he says, you need rest. Like, not just, not, not talking about, like, sleep, but rest. And it's not being so, thinking about everything that's going on and just chill out. All right, God, thank you. So you know what I did today at lunchtime? I came over here, and I laid before the Lord right here, and I rested. And I said, all right, God, you said for me to rest. Here I am. Boom. I laid out right here, rested for 35 minutes. I think I fell asleep. No, no, anyway. So I laid right here, and I was just on my face. On my face, guys, like this. Just boom, laid out. Because I refuse, I refuse, I refuse to have that in my relationship. I refuse to have that in my relationship. I am not going to be the initiator of hostility. I am not going to be the initiator of complaining and murmuring. I am not going to be that person. I'm not because that is not me. God created me in his image and in his likeness. And if he rests, I can rest. If he has peace, I can have peace. If he can love, then I can love. And if he can communicate to me in ways where I can receive it, then I can communicate to others in ways where they can receive it too. That's part of the building process. Did I get that tonight, guys? Come on, somebody. Praise God. Hey, let me give you one last one real quick, guys, that I really, 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 really want you guys to get. Respect. 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 Don't never let or find yourself disrespecting your wife or your husband. Because if it gets to that point, we need to reset something. Because we done lost something. Something just fell out and lost. We lost. No, no. Look, communication skills is the top thing that we need to have in our building. It's a great skill. It needs to be honed and it needs to be sharpened. Amen? Come on. Amen? Praise God. Did y'all guys get something tonight? Amen? Well, at this time, I want to give you guys the opportunity to sow to give into the kingdom of God tonight. Amen. Praise God. We're fixing to get released. And I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you for your tithes, for your hearts of generosity, for your gifts, for all the different things that you guys are doing financially to make sure that this ministry continues to move forward, whether that's uh, paying tithes or giving offerings. Uh, just remember that every portion, a portion of your giving, it is going out to mission missions out there. We're helping people out. And even here in the local community, we're doing our best to help people out as well. And uh, just know that we are, we are blessed to have each and every one of you. 
being obedient to God and doing your part. Amen. Praise God. So if you are in need of an envelope, they're right there, right in front of your seats. If you or you give if you give by way of text to give, uh, the information will be up on the board here for you guys. We just want to say thank you so much for your parts to do that. If you would please stand up to your feet at this time. Amen. Praise God. Our, our, our usher is going to put the bucket up here for you guys so on your way out, you guys can come up here and just drop your offering off right there. And again, we just say thank you. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's lift our hands to the heaven this morning. I mean this evening. Say this with me, Father God. Tonight, I receive. I am honing, developing, and sharpening my communication skills. I thank you, Lord, that I refuse to let hostility or negativity or opposition or division be in any of my relationships. I thank you, Father, that I will be an initiator of life in every relationship I'm involved in. And I thank you, God, that your word is steering me in that direction. I thank you for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in every area of my life. I thank you, Father, for this. I expect great results. I expect strengthening and reinforcement in every relationship I have. And I ask these things in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus. And everybody said amen and amen. <laughs>